Hi, my name is Keith Morrison and I'm a staff scientist at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. And today I'm going to be telling you about advanced synthetic minerals, which are a new mineral based cure to combat antibiotic resistance. <clears throat> I want to first start by giving you a vision for this product. Um, what we're doing has never been done before. We're harnessing a natural geochemical reaction um, to combat antibiotic resistance. And we're doing this with fully synthetic minerals uh, that are backed by scientific research. And so we're really offering a completely new paradigm shift in the treatment of antibiotic resistant infections. And this would be for topical and intestinal uh, infections. And we really see ourselves emerging into three key markets, the personal care market, livestock, and clinical markets. And we hope to become a leader in applying these mineral-based pharmaceuticals in the age of antibiotic resistance. Um, and the reason this is so important is because antibiotic resistance is a growing threat. Currently, we have 750,000 deaths per year globally, and that's set to increase to over 10 million deaths per year, even surpassing deaths from cancer by the year 2050. This will also come with an increased cost to treat these infections. Right now we spend 3 billion, that's project, projected to become over 1 trillion in healthcare costs associated with this. Uh, this will also lead to decreases in global GDP, uh, throwing many people into extreme poverty. And we also see a decline in livestock production, potentially up to 7.5%. And so the bottom line right now is that current antibiotics are not working. And so, we have an urgent need for new treatment options in this age of antibiotic resistance. <clears throat> so that's where we come in. We're using th synthetic antibacterial mineral systems. Now these were originally discovered in nature from natural mineral deposits. However, there are a lot of problems associated with these minerals in nature. Uh, they have some impurities that we don't want and it's very difficult to establish a reproducible dose. So we were able to actually synthesize these minerals from the ground up. And the two components are cementite clay mineral that has a uh, cation exchange capacity. And the other is an iron sulfide mineral that has semiconductor properties. And these two work together in this cycle to maintain the generation of hydrogen peroxide and reactive oxygen species that are antibacterial while uh, buffering solution pH at the same time. And this has been shown effective to kill uh, uh, antibiotic resistant pathogens in, in, in um, all, all those that are commonly found in hospital acquired infections. And we have a US patent application uh, for this technology. Just to give you a quick sense of the dose response here, I'm showing you an E. coli infection on the left and a MRSA infection on the right with his methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And they have a pretty different dose response. It took 100 milligrams per mil uh, of, the, of the mineral formulation to kill E. coli in one hour, whereas a MRSA infection, which is traditionally a topical infection, uh, it only took 50 milligrams per mil to kill the bacteria in one hour. So depending on the species, you can tailor the dose. And uh, this is the first time a dose response has ever actually been done for a mineral product like this. And um, we're also having minimal toxicity to mammalian cells when measured in vitro. Um, so there's an initial toxic event, but then once the minerals are moved and the bacteria are killed, the cells can regrow. <clears throat> so if we look at the market opportunity for these three uh, um, industries that I was uh, referring to earlier, um, the cosmetic and personal care market really stands out. It's $22 billion a year uh, uh, market and uh, acne treatments rep uh, um, represent about $12 billion slice of that pie. And the animal and human health uh, and wound care markets are also very large, representing 20 bi uh, 50 billion and 20 billion of that share. Um, however, there are some uh, FDA requirements that we would need to enter either the acne treatment, animal care, or, or human markets. Uh, however, cosmetic applications don't require a, a full FDA approval. And so we think that that might be a good route to start uh, these minerals in, in, in um, start generating profit in a market. Um, again, if we want animal markets or clinical markets, we have to go through the FDA trials. Um, so uh, I have been mentioning all three of these markets together. However, I'm gonna go forward with a case study on entering the cosmetic market because we think there's less re uh, regulation and it's a quicker path uh, to market 
uh, for this product. So if we look at the competition, we're looking at the major um, uh, cosmetic industries, L'Oreal, Colgate, Gillette, Revlon. Um, and, and there's also, there's already, already a lot of products out there that utilize minerals and specifically claim minerals. There's clay masks, acid peels, facial cleansers, toothpaste. However, none of them are antibacterial. Uh, they don't establish this geochemical redox cycle. Um, and they're just a different class of, of, of minerals compared to what we've made. So there's nothing out on the market right now that it, it reproduces our product. Um, and so we think it could be used as an antibacterial cleansing and detoxifying facial mask uh, in a cosmetic application. So what we're asking for uh, is a cosmetic industry partner, and we're looking to capture 5% of the skincare market. Um, and to get there, we would need $3 million to get, get up and running, get to proof of concept with animal models and, and production and scaling. And so uh, we anticipate that after three years, we would be generating revenue. And the way we would do this is uh, I would be hired for with a work for others contract. And then we would generate multiple field of use licenses depending on, on, on each market that we're going into. Uh, and then the profits would be through royalties and revenue sharing. And just to give you an example of a, of a current clay-based product that L'Oreal is selling on the market right now, uh, they're selling this clay mask at $44 per 50 grams. So depending on our production costs, um, we can have a, a very high profit margin for a product of this class. So the current status and exit plan, um, right now there's been over 15 years of scientific research um, into developing this product. Initially started in nature and now we've gone fully synthetic. Uh, over 10 million spent on the research and development and now, now it's led to this, this patent application. And we're now just starting preliminary mouse models with uh, skin and gut infections. And if we look at the manufacturing costs, uh, we could do it for a, a pretty low price, only $8 to, to make 50 grams of this product. And if we're selling it at, you know, $40, $50 per 50 grams, we have a very high profit margin to work with. And so that's why we think this would be appealing to an industrial partner like L'Oreal or Revlon, where we could either contract the manufacturing with them or do it in-house and, and get that set up. Uh, and the type of time frame we're looking at in, in this three years is initially we get that proof of concept animal model done to show that we do no harm uh, to skin. And uh, uh, in year two, we would start scaling the mineral synthesis, and that would be about $1 million to, to get the um, infrastructure and team together. Uh, and then once we have the scaling and, and animal model concept done, production and marketing would take over, and we would need another $1.5 to to get that um, up and running. Um, and then after, after year three, then we would be starting to generate revenue. Um, I also mentioned that we're, you know, we're still interested in the livestock markets and, and human health markets. Um, if we look at a similar uh, uh, example where we're doing these animal models, FDA trials and scaling of the minerals, for livestock, it would take a little bit longer, about four to five years with FDA trials, and we would need about $10 million and if you look at the clinical healthcare markets, we're looking at about five to seven years and about $15 million that's needed to uh, break into those markets. Um, so we think we have an extremely novel product that has great potential. And with that, I'd like to take any questions and thank you for listening.